Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and in this one we are taking a look at boilers. Now boilers are the newest addition to the heat based machines on nuclear tech mod and they are an amazing upgrade compared to the one block boilers that we had before. So first we are going to learn a bit about the boilers and then let's see how to make a simple power plant using them. Now this power plant will use 4 self charging uranium batteries so that's 400 HE per second in total as its input power. And for the output power, we are going to get 20,000 HE per second. So that's 50 fold increment in terms of power. And making this plant is also pretty simple. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Let's start with some basics. The boiler has a base of 3 by 3 blocks and its height is 4 blocks in total. Now it accepts heat from the bottom side which makes it perfect to place on top of any of the heaters. Solid fuel heater, liquid fuel heater or the electric heater. For its input ports there are two on the bottom side on the left and the right. So by default the boiler will take water which will go in the bottom and the output steam will come out from the top. So this boiler has two input ports and one output port. In order to change the input of the boiler you can right click the input port with any of the fluid identifier. So right now it will convert steam into dense steam. Then we can also have dense steam converting into super dense steam. And finally super dense steam going into ultra dense steam. Now this also can take crude oil and convert it into hot crude oil making it perfect for your refinery. Another thing while hovering over the boiler you will be able to see its internal buffer for steam and then steam or basically for the input and the output. Now before making the power plant itself make sure to gather 20 stacks of block of scrap. This will help a lot in reducing the startup time of the entire plant. So let's start working on the power plant itself. Place down a tank with water fluid identifier and also heavy infinite water tank in it. We will replace this with normal infinite water tank later on. Leave a 5 block gap and on the 5th block start placing 5 pieces of firebox like this and do the same thing on the opposite side as well. This will leave a three block gap in the middle. Now on top of each of the firebox we are going to place our boiler and the boiler is going to be aligned in such a way that the input of the boiler is going to align with the tank. So place down a total of 10 boilers on top of each of the fireboxes like this. Now that that's done let's connect the water ducts. So connect them in separate lines of two like this and now in the middle we are going to place our item ducts. While we are doing that the water tanks or the boilers will slowly fill up with water. So connecting each of the firebox place down item ducts like this and now let's make a fuel setup which is going to be a block of scrap. So from the middle leave three blocks and on the fourth block place down a crate. This crate will be the input crate where all of the fuel is going to be stored. Now on the crate place down a servo and set the stack size to 1 and redstone to ignore. Remember this cause this setting is going to be applied to all of the other servos as well. Now on top place down an item duct with automatic crafting table and the same servo settings. Now from the ground one block up place down three shredders leaving a one block gap like this and on the last shredder place down your igneous extruder and in the igneous extruder in the augmentation section place down the accelerated extrusion augment this will give us 16 cobblestone per operation and also make sure to set the bottom of the extruder to output so that it can directly deposit all the cobblestone into the shredder below it. Now we are going to connect the output of the first shredder which is the bottom into the input of the second shredder which is the top. Get rid of every unnecessary connection using the crescent hammer. Also set a servo with the same settings stack size 1 and redstone to ignore. And now let's do the same for the remaining shredders as well. And here goes the final shredder into the side of the automatic crafting table. And let's set the servo for this one as well. Stack size reduced to 1 and redstone to ignore. That's it. So this is the basic fuel setting. We have cobblestone to gravel, gravel to sand, sand to dust and dust to block of scrap. Now in order to set up all the shredders, place down your self charging uranium battery and also dash blades so that they don't break. And finally in the automatic crafting table, place down a uranium battery as well. In order to set up the automatic crafting table you will need the 
piece of dust that we are going to get from the final shredder. Nine blocks of dust will give us one block of scrap. So this is the recipe that we want to go with and yeah. Now to connect all of the boilers, connect them on the top with steam ducts and we are going to connect them in the front going into a single industrial turbine. So leave a two to three block gap, place down a turbine and connect all of the steam ducts going into this turbine. And we don't need to set this turbine up as by default it is already going to process normal steam. A single auxiliary cooling tower is enough for this build. So get your low pressure steam from the turbine going into the cooling tower and water from the cooling tower going back into the tank. Now in order to start this entire plant up, place two stacks of the block of scrap into each and every firebox. That is precisely why I told you to have 20 stacks of block of scrap. And with this, our power plant is fully functional as visible from the particles coming out of the cooling tower. To start the fuel production process, right click the igneous extruder with the lava and water bucket and that will start producing cobblestone 16 at a time. All of the cobblestone will end up as gravel, gravel into sand and sand into dust. And the dust will be converted into block of scraps which will travel through the item duct and end up in the fuel boxes or the fire boxes keeping them saturated. Each block of scrap will burn for a total of 200 seconds which is more than enough time for every firebox to receive its block of scrap. As for the power produced, we are going to get 20,000 HE per second. Now it's important to not let the internal buffer of the boiler fill up because if it does, the boiler will explode. Now as of right now this does no damage but still you are going to lose a boiler anyway. So it's better to always keep an eye on the internal buffer of the boiler. There we go. So that's a boiler wasted. <laughs> so that was all I had for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel guys. We are very close to 10,000 subscribers. Peace out my dudes.